Guess who? It's me. I think that one of the most important things that we do here at Lace on Race is we're able to talk a lot about and I just got alerted that Lace on Race is live. I agree with that sentiment. It's right. We're live. One of the things that has been one of my biggest challenges, not just in my social justice life, but in my life in general, has been the ability to stick to it. There are a lot of things that I have started with the greatest of intentions, with the most honorable of motives that has gone by the wayside. We can talk about the less important things, the macrame projects that are in the back of the house that are right next to the rug hooking projects that are right next to the beading projects. We can talk about the stack of about 30 books that I have right now. That's not completely my fault. There are books that I need to read and there's only so many times in the day, but my sort of academic or, or intellectual ADHD often kicks in and I'll start reading a book and then I look in the bibliography, which I'm not sure I should do because that takes me down a rabbit hole. Oh my gosh, Scanlon just referenced this person, so I must get that book so that I can have a fuller understanding of what Scanlon is trying to tell me. And then I get that book, and then I get that book, and what I wind up having are four books that are a quarter read a piece. But that does, when you think about it, add up to one book. Sticking to it, though. Sticking to the end of the book, all 237 pages, right? Sticking to the actual rug hooking project so I can go, oh, it really is a picture of a cat. Thanks. That has not always been something that I have been good at. Becoming a relentlessly reliable person both in my professional life as well as in my online and off life and personal life, becoming a relentlessly reliable person to my friends and the people who I know care about me and who I care about is something that I do try to cultivate. I do very much try to let my yes be yes and my no be no. I really do try to go the distance with my friends and even with my intellectual slash academic ADHD, I do try to eventually go all the way down the rabbit hole. It's important, particularly when I'm talking about being in community, being in community here at Lace on Race, being in community with my staff and volunteers, being in community with my church, being in community with the friends that I've picked up along the way, San Diego and elsewhere. If I were to impart one virtue, just one, just one, it would be to become relentlessly resilient and reliable. That is not something that we are trained to do. And I have noticed a lot of times when I'm looking at friends' Facebook posts or Instagrams or Twitters, and people are talking about the fact that they want to become a relentlessly reliable person, not just in social justice or in racial justice, but across the board. It's amazing how many of their friends will walk it back to them. You're awesome. You don't have to do anything else. Give yourself some space. Treat yourself gently. Go easy on yourself. That works when it comes to rug hooking. I mean, sometimes you get tired, particularly when it's a cat and there's 13 different shades of brown and a tabby, you get tired of hooking and hooking, oh, another color of brown, hooking and hooking, and then you have to do the background. Yeah, that's like four hours of black and I'm just not sure I'm in the mood for it some days. So if my rug hooking project stays in the back of the house. The only person who is missing out on the rug hooking project is me. And eventually I will pick it up because I really do like it and I did pay for the kit. But it is something that we need to learn how to do on a more serious 
a more comprehensive level. We're not great at following through. We're not great at keeping our commitments. So I do want to talk to you about becoming relentlessly reliable, about how we can mitigate what we call churn and how we can decide to be here, not just in service to ourselves, but also to our fellow community members to whom we have made commitments, stated or unstated. The relationship that you and I have my job is to show up and be relentlessly reliable to you. That's also your job to me. And we need to talk about that reciprocity. We need to talk about that mutuality and that parity. I'm going to take a drink. Hold on. <coughs> Sorry. It's dry in Southern California. And also in relationship to the reason why we do everything that we do our North Star to lessen and mitigate the harm endured by black and brown people, perpetuated by white people. Again, I'm sorry. <coughs> Gotta love Southern California. In service to that, because it all leads up to it, I want to take a little bit of time. We're at guideline number six. I want to take a little bit of time and just very quickly do a review of the five that we've gone through so far because they all lead up to number six. First and foremost, we're not an entertainment space. We are not People Magazine. We are not BuzzFeed. We're not, well, technically we're Facebook, but we're working on getting out of Facebook. We're not just something that you come, get a dopamine hit, and scroll and roll away. This is actually worth sticking around for and coming in with a mindset that you're not just going to be entertained, but you're actually going to engage. Your engagement is for the sake of engaging. This cannot be a distraction from your real life. Hopefully this is becoming more and more inculcated into your real life so that racial justice is not just something that you do. Racial justice becomes something who you are. That means it can't be something that you that you that you're fluffing about. I realize that people can spend inordinate amounts of computer bandwidth and internal bandwidth wondering whether or not Brad and Jennifer will ever get back together again. And do Kim Kardashian's lips really look like that? Hashtag, no, they don't. Okay, we just said that. We can take a look at Pinterest, and, and, and I have been doing that lately. I am repainting my kitchen, and I have scrolled and scrolled and scrolled and gone, like the palette, like the palette, like the palette, like the palette. But I can't tell you what the palette's for. That was for entertainment. Eventually, though, I am going to have to paint that kitchen, and I'm going to have to stop scrolling and rolling and use it for the instructional tool that it is so that I can change my life. Hopefully by this time on January 1st, I am going to have a newly painted kitchen. Fingers crossed. But that means I have to stop scrolling and put on my overalls and start rolling. See what I did there? That was pretty good. No reacts to posts ever. That we've talked about ad nauseum, but it's worth talking about again. The reason that we say no reacts is first and foremost, because it's my living room and I'm not a fan of reacts, but also because it is for your benefit. It is for your benefit. Reacting is not going to get you where you say you want to be. And one of the things that we're going to lead up to in guideline number six is actually becoming more and more, again, fingers crossed, the person that you say you want to be. And the way to become the person you say you want to be Wait for it. It's a secret. I'm only telling you. No one else is listening. Are you ready? Okay. Shh. The way to become the person that you say you want to be is to become more and more and more and more and more the person you want to be. That means 
Now we're going to talk about this later, but for these purposes, that means becoming that person by really knowing what you say you want. I think that a lot of times there are people who really want to want to do the work towards racial justice, really want to put in their elbow grease and the intellectual acumen and do all of that. But at the end of the day, they're not quite sure. And that's fine for now, for them. But being that lukewarm, I'm not sure I want to do the work, but I want to say I'm a part of this space. So like, like, heart, like, sad face, angry face. And then they go on to whatever their version of a rug hooker is, you know, whether it's Instagram or one of those video games or whatever. Liking and hearting is not going to get you closer to being the person that you say you want to be. But first you need to decide who that person is. Choosing to not use reacts, choosing to actively engage in the space is an affirmation for you every day of the person that you say you want to be. And eventually you are going to stop that sentence. It's not going to be the person you say you want to be. It's the person you are becoming. The person you are becoming. And you are not going to get to the person you are becoming by sad faces and angry faces and heart emojis. It's not going to happen. You're doing it as a favor to yourself. You're doing it as a favor to your fellow community members. You're doing it in relationship to me. And you're doing it in service to our North Star. Everybody say it. Oh, wait, hold on. And white supremacy. That's a new one. I, I helped you out on that one. We've said it before. Guideline number three. We've said this a lot. Facebook actively suppresses us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it gets worse during election cycles because we are indeed considered a political space. I think I've told the story more than once. The first six months of our existence, I had to fight for every post because lace on race has race in it. And Facebook's algorithms assumed I was a white supremacist almost every single time. I think I lost a couple battles, but every single time, for the most part, um, a real pair of eyeballs looked at it and we got the post up. But that was a lot of work on my part. And particularly, even with getting that, we're still suppressed. Facebook doesn't really like talking about race. Facebook doesn't like black women talking about race and it shows. So again, the how we mitigate this is that you really do need to be proactive and intentional about your engagement with the space, about coming to this space. Facebook is not going to show you feeds. I love Lace on Race. I'm a follower. I'm a fan. I get almost nothing in my personal feed from Lace on Race. And I literally am the number one biggest fan of Lace on Race. So I am sure that if I am not getting every single post as the owner of this page, you are not getting it either. That means you have to do what I do, which is go in intentionally. Go in mindfully. That is part of becoming relentlessly reliable, not waiting for it to be spoon fed. And there's a microcosm here as well, because so often a lot of us want our social justice work to be spoon fed to us. Learning how to take responsibility, because at the end of the day, that's what we're talking about. Learning how to take responsibility for your growth and your knowledge and your engagement and who you are is a big part of your praxis. So in a way, you could sort of say, I'm sort of glad that Facebook suppresses us. The people who are coming here regularly come on their own, on their own volition, using their agency and capacity to be able to do this work well. One reason that we get the reacts we do is that people will kind of just scroll and roll their Facebook feed. Oh, I like that. Like, and then they go, oh, 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 oh. It's lace on race. She doesn't like reacts. 
what to do, what to do. Well, if you were coming on your own, it wouldn't be a surprise when it, when it fell up, when it, when it showed up. That's true. And also as we are migrating to the website, you're not going to get, you're not going to get reminders either. You, we, we may wind up doing um, a voluntary opt-in email so that you can get notified whenever there are new posts on the website, but that's a little ways off. In the meantime, it's on, I need to give myself a little bit more life. Howdy. It's on you to do that work. There is an essay that I wrote that apparently there's one line that really um, struck a lot of people. And um, it was a year ago, but every single time people confront it, uh, they comment on it. And the line is, so little is asked of white people. And actually, I would amend it to, so little is asked of anyone in service to authentic racial justice, equity, and, 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 and parity. In that sense, we're used to, it's like, tell us what to do, give us the dates, we'll buy the t-shirt and we're done. But it takes more than that. And this is a microcosm for your out, I'm pointing at the picture window, for your outside life as well. You have to do the work to find the opportunities to serve. It is not going to come on your Facebook feed. As I have noticed, and I'm surprised that Mark Zuckerberg hasn't figured it out yet, I don't have a Facebook live feed where I'm standing by my car and I can just scroll and Facebook tells me what to do that day. I don't need that. I have Danny and Asana. She tells me what to do and I do it. <laughs> but seriously, if I want to be the woman I say I want to be, I need to be proactive about it. And I need to actively seek out the resources and the community that I need to become the woman, more and more become the woman that I say I want to be until I can drop that say, until I am becoming the woman that I say I want to be. And then I'm just becoming that woman. And then one day I'm going to wake up and guess what? There was another post that we did maybe about a year ago that a lot of people have also responded to asking this question, are you a best case, a case study, or a cautionary tale? And most people hedged their bets, right? They said, I hope I'm a case study. Please God, don't let me be a cautionary tale. Maleza was bold, dare I say, brilliantly bold. She was one of the first ones to say, actually, I'm a best case. I engage with rigor. I course correct when necessary. I engage all the time. I take it outside. I am planting my orchard every single day. And people at first thought, wow, that is incredibly arrogant of her. She doesn't know everything. She never said. She never said she knew everything. But she said she was becoming, becoming becoming and becoming, adding that ING makes your best case. So right now, pop quiz. Are you a best case, case study or cautionary tale? By the time we get to number six, hopefully you'll know what that is. The next one, as I scroll up, if there's no new material posted up by me or admins or our contributing writers who are amazing, that doesn't mean there's nothing to gain. I gave that guideline last week and there has been a substantial cohort who have indeed heeded that exhortation. They have gone back to pinned posts, some of which they hadn't seen at all, some of which they'd seen but not commented on, so they commented and responded, and some of them, where they've already commented and responded, came back and did it again. There is absolute profit in coming back. I, myself, am looking at all the old stuff. One of the great things about being <coughs> semi-retired is that I have had the opportunity to just sit here on the coronavirus couch and basically take a walk back on memory lane and see how far we've come, how far I've come as a writer and a leader, how far this community has come, and also looking at these posts and being able to see the growth and the trajectory in other people as well. Oh, wow, Laura was saying this in 2018, and here she is now. Oh, wow, this is amazing. 
And the way, and I, I can tell, I can tell. It is absolutely true that your presence on the board, how much you're here, fully engaging, is a great indicator of the stick to itiveness of it, which we'll get to in guideline number six, but also the quality of your posts and also how it's sticking in your brain. Looking at it with fresh eyes. I am not, you know, to use a very, very frivolous example, you know how I feel about lipsticks, right? I love them. I got a three pack the other day. Um, this one, and there was one of the ones, one of these where I had no idea. It's like, what am I supposed to do with this color? It's practically my skin color. I don't know what to do with it. So I put it away. I just put it in the coffee cup where I keep all my lipsticks working on two coffee cups now, but it occurred to me the other day. Oh, I can mix it with another one. I am not the same woman who bought that lipstick two years, two weeks ago and thought I had nothing to do with it. Oh yeah, well, I'll just use the other two. This is just one of those ones because they always do that in sets, right? You get a, you get three or four, you can use two or three and one of them is like, ah! why don't you just give us all the ones that we all really like? Note to self, write a letter. But the point is, is that when you go back, you get to see your own growth. You get to see when you were white splaining or mansplaining or white mansplaining. You get to see when you were tentative or when you were trying to walk back or when you were trying to keep peace on a thread that made you activated. And now you're bold. It's like, hey, this is, we're going to mix it up. Yay. And a year ago, you would just close your laptop because it just got too hot, right? You've changed. And the only way to be able to really see and mark those gains is if you actually see it. And you also see it in the lives of your fellow community walkers. Speaking of which, thoughtful posts. I talked about this last week too. As I said, I would love to go and have a big gulp with each and every one of you. That is probably not going to be possible but I wanna to get to know you. And the way that I get to know you is right here, right here on the boards. I want to see your growth. I want to rejoice. I wanna hear how you're taking it outside. I wanna see how you're mixing it up with your fellow community members. I wanna see you go through the process of connection, disconnection and repair. I wanna see you do that full circle. I wanna see you do it with other community walkers and I wanna see you do it with me. You're not going to get that scrolling and rolling. This is an interactive space by design. This is a space where you are bringing your entire self, right? Hopefully. And a place where the only way that you can learn how to do this stuff well, particularly in other online spaces and in your offline life, is if you are doing it here durably and well. And we talked a little bit about the idea of regression or relapse. This is a big deal in this space. When you are thoughtful, you are cementing, cementing it into your mind. We talked about kind of how the brain processes things, auditory, visual, verbal. That's one reason when I'm looking at some posts or looking at some essays that I've written, I actually say it out loud. Because now, if you were, had, like I said last week, if you had me in a functional M MRI, ah, you'd see all kinds of things lighting up. As opposed to if I'm looking at it with half mast, nice, I agree, nice. Oh, that pisses me off. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's so sad. Thoughtful posts are a way of you allowing yourself to go shields down and let the material permeate you. I know, I get it. Society doesn't want you to do that. They want a certain level of detachment. Dare I say dissociation, which is what? You get a lot with the likes and hearts and emojis. You have this face 
being sad for you, but do you really feel it on a visceral level? Are you feeling it in your marrow? You have a sort of angry face, but are you really mad? Are you mad enough to go, this is something that I am going to make a priority? Or are you just, yeah, I, I can, basically when I see emojis and reacts, is, I can see how a reasonable person might be sad at this. I personally am not sad, not sad enough to actually take the next step and make a comment or really feel it and really inculcate the knowledge and check in with my feelings about this, but I can see how someone else will. Click! No, no. I talk about not being self-focused a lot. And by that, I mean self-centered and self-aggrandizing, but there's nothing wrong with checking in with yourself and becoming more self-aware. Thoughtful posts, as opposed to reacts and emojis, or one-word drive-bys, or snark, because we've been seeing a lot of that lately, because a lot of people are new to this space. We're going to get to that. And they are not used to interacting the way that we have all chosen to interact. And so they're not used to, I want to say this, and I want to be not tone policing. I want to be careful about how I say, because I want my words to be effective. I want my words to land. So I need to take responsibility for the words that I put out so that there's comprehension and perhaps buy-in. And even if there's dissension and disagreement, it's not going to be because I was unkind and people turned me off. I truly believe that it is possible to do deep work and difficult work and challenging work and work that makes you itch a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Without resorting to the tools of the oppressor. And the tools of the oppressor are unkindness. They are snark. They are sarcasm. I refuse to use the tools of the oppressor to further my own liberation or the liberation of black and brown people. I will not. And in my living room, we don't do that either. There, there, there's more on the guidelines, but I just wanted to say that now. They're, they're, they're in there. They're in there. When you read the guidelines, they're definitely in there. Definitely. So now we're on to number six. We've had the review, right? Now we're on to number six. And I've talked up a little bit about it, so this should not be a surprise to you. I'm going to read it out loud. Are you ready? Because this is indeed a novel space where you are challenged to interact both with material and with your fellow walkers in ways you may never have before, we ask that you give yourself the commitment to be here for a period of time. Reading, engaging, fully acclimating yourself to the space and our ethos and our method and engaging with intent. Merely lurking or spectating is not enough and might I add, will never be enough. One of the challenges, one of the challenges that we have faced here is what we call churn with people coming in and out and in and out. One of the skills you're going to be building here is how to become a relentlessly reliable person with the kit that you bought at Joanne's Hobbies. And I am going to finish it. I really do want this picture of the cat, but also how to become a resilient and reliable person outside this space as well. I say this all the time, all the time, who you are in this space is who you are. And I know that a lot of people do a lot of pushback on that. Well, just because I don't do it here doesn't mean I don't do it in other places. I get that all the time. And then I say, then tell me where you're doing it. And then no. The fact of the matter is we're actually, at least on the surface, one of the gentlest and least activating spaces on the internet because we demand thoughtful posts, because we demand a certain level, not of civility, not of niceness, but of kind candor. We do get different kinds of responses and the community is a different space than in other spaces. And guess what? You would think that a lot of people would go, yay, this is awesome. But a lot of people are really, really confronted and not galvanized, but rather threatened. Here's the thing about this. If you do, as I'm asking you to do, I will know you and you will know yourself better and the community will know you too. And everybody has these 
twin forces, these twin pulls, these dueling, if you will, imperatives. One, they want to be seen. And sometimes we actually see this. People kind of acting badly because they know that if they act badly enough, um, one of and they're and they're doing it to an administrator or one of the leadership team that eventually I'll step in. So it's just kind of, I hate this place. It's terrible. It's awful. And Lace never talks to me. Okay. Or they will say, this place is just a cult. You all have to think the same thing. It's like, okay, well, it's, it's nice that you decided that we're a cult after 2.5 seconds, but okay. I'm still waiting for the Lamborghini, y'all. Or at least Lamborghini seat covers that I'll put on my Santa Fe and I'll just tell myself it's a Lamborghini Santa Fe. Cult leaders need a accoutrement. So y'all need to get on it. But seriously, lurking or spectating is definitely not going to be enough. One of the reasons that we have had, actually, it, 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 it's my frustration more than other pieces, that we have not been able to go as far and as fast as we are and why we're reconfiguring as Lays on Race Cafe so that Chef's Table can go as far and as fast as I would like to is because of churn. And there's some arrogance in there and some white supremacy. Churn a lot of times happens when everybody's everything's fine and I'm talking about other people, but when I start talking about individual behaviors, when I start talking about individual attitudes and how it shows up um, in harmful ways to brown and black people, that's when we tend to get exoduses, right? We get we tend to get exoduses when we start talking about personal accountability almost all the time. We get um, churn and 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 exodus whenever I do an ask, every single time, every single time. And also we get churn because of this. People are here and they'll read one or two pinned posts and they'll think they have it all underneath their belt. And in fact, people have actually told me that. Well, I'm going to actually go and start my own group because I learned so much here. You were here for two months. And you made five comments. Oh, here's my hand. Five comments. But you're going to start a group. And then when it crashes and burns, I get PMs asking me to come and mediate it or facilitate it because it went off the rails. It's going to take longer than two weeks to acclimate yourself here. It's going to take more than two months to acclimate yourself here. In the article that Vox Magazine did, and, and I will drop it later on, along with the guidelines here for your ease of use. So if admins or leadership team is listening, um, if you want to help me out, you can drop the guidelines down here and you can also drop the Vox Magazine article. We talked about slow cookers versus walks, like what you make stir fry in. And I would also add microwaves, right? Um, partially because my microwave is so frustrating. It's almost 30 years old and it still runs, except that most of the keypad doesn't work anymore. So I can't put in 30 seconds because you usually do 30 seconds or one minute. Those numbers are gone. So I now have to put in 70 seconds, but time it. Okay, 30 seconds is off. Oh, oh, oh. That's what I have to wind up doing. Same with the walk. People want it fast. And usually when I'm microwaving food, it's not food that I already prepared. It's not food that I freshly prepared. It's stuff that's been in the refrigerator for a while, or it's stuff that I picked up at Valley Farms or Sprouts. It's spoon fed to me. It's processed. It's pre-made. Slow cookers, on the other hand, take effort and patience and time. Yes, you can just throw the roast in there, but you have to cut up the vegetables. You have to do the spice mix. And then you get this wonderful aroma in your house for the next eight hours. It's pretty awesome. But you have to do the prep work first. You'll read more about it in the box article, but I think that it's really important that we remember this, that we be slow cookers. That is one reason why, even though I am indeed a charlatan cult leader, I actually like it when people give me pushback. It tells me that they're reading and they're reading deeply. I actually like it when people don't agree with me. There are some things, and we're going to talk about this. There are some things that are absolutely foundational. Racism is real. It is primarily an economic construct. 
white people started it and have the primary res re primary responsibility for confronting and dismantling it. I am not going to argue those points. That is not Coke versus Pepsi. That is foundational stuff that you have to get. And one reason that everyone goes, you just parrot lace. Everybody just parrots lace. Well, right now when we're at pre-primer level, yeah, I want you to get your ABCs down. I want you to be able to diagram the sentence. Are you with me? Later on, you can synthesize and generalize and do all that fun stuff all over in your frontal lobe. It's going to be great. I can't wait. Let's get there faster, please. And we're going to in the Lace on Race Cafe because I, for one, personally, I'm tired of holding back. But in order for us to do higher level work, we need to be able to have both the intellectual and the historical pieces down. We also need to be able to have the relational pieces down and the internal regulation pieces down. A lot of times people get activated and they go and they flounce or they just fade off into the wind and then they come back. I needed to take a break. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We all need to take a break. I think that everybody should get a manicure. I can't. I, I hate this. There it is. Get a manicure. That takes 20 minutes and then get back to work. The people who are most negatively affected by racism and white supremacy in this country don't get a break. They don't get to decide that other things are more important than their lives. And part of this becoming resiliently, resiliently reliable is feeling that same sense of urgency and that same sense of primacy. That brings you a long way to becoming the woman or the man that you say you want to be. And that means becoming relentlessly reliable. And that means sticking around. It is the apex of arrogance and hubert, hubris. I almost said my dad's name, Hubert. It is, it is arrogant and hubristic to think that Oh, I read a couple articles and I read that loud lady and I watched a couple videos and I'm good. You need to learn how to be able to have the hard conversations well. You need to be able to see something activating here in this space. You need to be able to be disagreed with and hold your own. Hold on to yourself. Hold your own hand. You're not going to get there in two weeks. And one reason that you're not is because... People aren't doing this. This is indeed a novel space. Almost three years ago, when I started Lace on Race, um, I looked around. I, it's like, because I actually read this book. It's called The Soul of a Machine by Tracy Kidder. It's about 30 years old. And it was talking about the making of a new model of cars at General Motors. And they have benchmarks, right? So if they were looking at let's just say a Chevy Silverado, they would look at a Ford F50, F150 as their benchmark. How can we look at the Ford 150 and try to find a way to make it as good or better as the Ford 150? So I was looking for benchmarks. I didn't find any. People were talking about racial justice. Yeah, people were talking about relational issues. Yeah, people were talking about applied ethics. Yeah, but nobody was doing all three. And so it was left to this chubby middle-aged lady in Lemon Grove, California to synthesize all this stuff. So no, this actually is a novel method and a novel ethos. I actually did think it up. So no, you're not going to get it anywhere. And three years later, you would think that there would be some people who were doing some semblance or some facsimile or some approximation of what we're doing here. They're not. There are people who kind of do but they don't have the level of engagement we do. They don't have the level of heart that we do. And they don't go as deep. I'm not saying that to be arrogant. And that's one reason why they have 150,000 people and we have 10. That's okay. That's okay. I am willing to walk with you as slow or as fast as you want to go. I'm not going anywhere. There is a sinkhole on the Chase Lounge part of the coronavirus couch. I'm serious. I literally can't leave. There's a hoist that I have to use to get up to go to the bathroom. I am here for the duration and I will walk with you. That's a promise. No matter what's going on in my life. And today, that is particularly prescient. 
no matter what's going on in my life, I will be here for you and with you in service to our North Star. The very last sentence here, we are only as faithful and safe as the whole community commits to being. And there is something to be said. I know. I notice when people are here and there's like a flurry and then they're gone and then they come back and then there's a flurry and then they're gone. I know the people who are relentlessly reliable and those are the ones I trust. I love seeing friendly and familiar faces in my living room. I like knowing how they take their coffee. Are you with me? I like knowing if they're Nutter Butter people or if they're Lorna Doon people or if they're popcorn people. Or if they're like, Holly, just give them a meat board and call it a day. The point is, is that I love getting to know you. I love you getting to know me. And the only way we do that is in relentlessly and reliably walking together. And it bodes well for outside my picture window. Am I right? If you cannot commit to an online only space where the buy-in is easy, and the risk factor is low, then how are you going to do it in your offline lives? I'm going to give you that number again, and I'm going to watch people leave because they get pissed off at me every single time I say it over the last week. 55% of white women, 2% more than in 2016, voted for Donald Trump. I do not take partisan positions, but I can and do have an opinion about which platform was more or less in alignment with our shared North Star. Something happened. What we wound up with was a bunch of four years of women doing book clubs and joining groups and buying beanies and remember the safety pins? And nothing fundamentally changed. If I give you nothing else, relentless reliability that leads to sustained courage. Courage. You are not going to gain courage by lurking or spectating. This work takes real risk that all too many white people and also others, because nowadays our new North Star is lessening and mitigating the harm perpetuated by white people and white supremacy. None of us did the job that we could do, but we have a chance to do it better. And the way we do it better is to use this rehearsal space. We say here at Laysan Race, we lead leaders, we mentor mentors. That's you. We influence influencers. That's you. Every single time you leave this space, you leave my living room, you are influencing and leading. The question is, what are you influencing and who are you influencing and what are you teaching them? And not just by your words, but by your actions, not just by all the catchphrases that everyone's really good at now, four years later, that I could kind of care less about. I remember when I first started doing grassroots work and was also working with the Democratic Party. Again, we're not partisan, but I did. I worked with the Democratic Party and I worked with labor. And early on, I always thought that the most relentless and the reliable people, the people that would be my go-tos were the ones that looked like social justice warriors, right? They're the ones that were going to give me their absolute best. And then I would just sort of give short shrift to the little suburban lady from Lakeside who was wearing double knit polyester pants with the seam down the middle. Don't forget it was the late 90s. And with poodle perm hair. I needed to flip that. I needed to flip that. I want reliable. I go to the double knit polyester pants seam down the middle every single time. I go to the unassuming, bringing it to 2020, I go to the unassuming woman. I love piercings. I love tats. I love fun wigs. But appearance alone, optics alone, does not a racial justice person who is committed and reliable make. 
give me these days, basically nowadays, what used to be double knit slacks and a pantsuit with, with, with a self-tied belt that you got from Sears. Nowadays, that's those loafers that everybody wears that looks the same with a pair of black leggings and an oversized sweater over a camisole. I'll take her any day. Give me her. She'll work her butt off. And she'll be relentless and reliable. And she'll show her friends how to be relentless and reliable. I want that for you. Guideline number six, no lurking, no spectating. I'm going to actually put out, because remember how we were doing new norms? Here's a new, new norm. I am going to start saying I want 100 regular people and 100 people who have never commented before, ever, 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 ever. I want you commenting on this post because once you break the ice and you comment and you figure out that you're probably not going to die from it, it's easier to do. It's not just for the sake of me reading 500 or 1,000 comments, although I'm more than willing to do it. It's because I want you to, remember the last video, I want you to get it in, get it in, get it in so that you can take it out, take it out, take it out. Who we are in the next two years, regardless of the administration, there will still be racism and white supremacy, and we need to be on the front lines of that. In two years, there will be midterm elections where we will or will not have a change to Senate that can actually work a little bit harder at getting some of the things that are in alignment with our North Star into actual practice and legislation. There will still be fights in workplaces in congregations, around your own dinner tables, and learning how to do it here so that you can do it out there is crucial. So I want the regular people. I This is not at all a slam on the usual suspects. Keep going. I love you. You guys are what makes this living room someplace that I am eager to come to day after day after day. Those of you who churn, come in and out and in and out. Think about what it might, what might, what it might look like if you just said, hey, I'm going to be here for six months. I'm going to make it a practice. And for those of you who have lurked and spectated, think about what it looks like. It's not a threat. But if I know you, I can love you better. I can hold you better. This is a good place to be. I frankly love it. I think you will too. And you're not going to know how much you love it until you dive in. The Lace on Race Cafe is going to have a requirement that you do make a commitment because there will be a mentoring aspect attached that you are part of the community and commit to the mentoring process and being part of Lace on Race Cafe for a set period of time. Partially that's for me. It's wonderful to be able to know who I'm talking to. And it's easier for me when I'm setting 300 places rather than 10,000. There will still be counter service. We'll talk about that later. But if we want to go faster and farther and deeper, you got to stick around. And you got to show up. And you got to stick your head out of the gopher hole. I take risks every day, both here in Lace on Race and in other online and offline spaces where I am carrying the message to Lace on Race. I take risks every day. I'm still here. It's okay. It is okay to become the person that you say you want to be. And the way you do it is you suit up and you show up and you stand up. I love you all. I'll keep doing it until it doesn't. See, this is the hard part. It's like at the end, I never, I'm never sure when Facebook cuts me off.